Conversations on Dance is proud to have Yumiko as a continued partner in 2021. Yumiko is a company inspired by beauty and standards. As a leader in the dancewear industry, they take great pride in their impact as a socially and environmentally conscious brand. This month, Yumiko introduced six new mesh tones available for all personalized pieces. And as a summer celebration, Yumiko is offering a special in-store discount to our New York City listeners. Show that you are subscribed to Conversations on Dance at checkout to receive a 10% discount on your in-store purchase. Visit yumiko.com for store hours, and be sure to follow along on Instagram, at yumiko, to stay up to date. Special thanks to the town of Vail for their support of the Vail Dance Festival and Conversations on Dance live podcast recordings. This episode was recorded at the Manor Vale Lodge. I'm Rebecca King Ferraro. And I'm Michael Sean Breeden, and you're listening to Conversations on Dance. Today we are chatting with friend of the pod and American Ballet Theater principal dancer James Whiteside from the 2021 Vail Dance Festival. James tells us about his new self-proclaimed almost memoir that just hit bookshelves called Center Center. We hear about how long he has dreamt of writing a book, how the idea came about, what the writing process was like, and what he hopes readers will take away. At the end of the episode, he tells us a little bit about his newest ballet that he created for the Vail Dance Festival that was part of the festival's closing night performance. Center Center is available wherever books are sold and in hardcover, ebook, and audiobook. Click the link in the description of this episode to get your copy now. Hey, James Whiteside. Hello. How, how's conversations on dance today? <laughs> we're, we're doing great. great. <laughs> I'm so good. I just had rehearsal. I'm tired, so I've got an iced coffee, so I'm fun. But, yeah, that's yeah. great. And you're gay. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Me? <laughs> Couldn't be me. <laughs> Just, I don't know, maybe that, that joke flies over the head of people who listen, but I guess gays are supposed to drink iced coffee, but I don't. I never drink iced coffee, ever. All right. Congratulations. <laughs> what, what sort of award are you, what accolades are you know. seeking? <laughs> Welcome okay. back to the podcast. It's we, great I, to have we've you. We've had you on like seven times. I am your least popular, most uh you know, here, <laughs> guest. <laughs> Why are you saying least popular? That's not true. I don't know. I just... You just get competitive with Bella because Bella is our most popular yes, episode ever. Yes, I'm furious. I'm going to kill her. <laughs> so everybody tell it, share it on your interwebs. Right. Yeah, we have to... That's... We we're just going to make this this one beat Bella's. Uh, yeah, yeah, now it's, it's a competition. Because she's coming on too now, so... Well, you know... <laughs> F my drag. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now that now that we've gone like in the loopiest, I don't know what was I gonna say. Not, let's bring it down. Yeah. Let's let's t- dial it down and get into some things about your life. Are we gonna be serious now? Yeah. Yes. I mean, you yeah, know, adjacent. <clears throat> so, I don't know if you know there was a pandemic last year, and There's I'm not pandemic. sure if you were aware that ABT was not performing. So I just thought I wasn't cast. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what were some of the projects you took on during that time? Oh my God. I was so busy. <laughs> LOL. Um, you know, I didn't do any work that paid me really. Mm. Um, but I did do a lot of fun stuff. Yeah. Um, I released an album of music that I had written, uh, you know, as my alter ego, JB dubs, which is a very gay pop musician. I released music videos from said album. Mm -hmm. Um, I started the Cindy's Ballet class with Isabella Boylston, fellow ABT principal dancer, uh, which uh, we raised money for different charities every week and got people who were as bored as we were to kick and twirl in the comfort of their own homes. And uh, that I think that's my favorite thing I was doing, other than you know writing a book. I wrote a book as well, but you know we'll, we'll get We're there. We're definitely getting there. <laughs> but for the Cindy's Ballet class, how sh- soon into the lockdown did you guys start doing that? I oh. remember doing that really because at first I was like, I'm going to do ballet class. This is what I'm going to do during lockdown. And I took your class. It was like one of the first things. So it was like right away. I feel it was really right away. Yeah, yeah. Um, we stopped. I had COVID, by the way. You know, yeah. just FYI. So, like, I was very stuck in my house for a long time. It was right at the beginning. Right, like, everyone, like yeah. in March yeah. 2020. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was just stuck in my apartment with my now ex-boyfriend. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> um, and uh, just doing the Cindy's Ballet class. I Okay, are you? can I do an anecdote? Yeah. Sure. So, 
we were booked on the Kelly and Ryan show live with Kelly and Ryan. Uh-huh. Oh, wow. And we had to get up at the butt crack of dawn to do a tech test. And it was their first episode from quarantine. Oh. And so I we're supposed to do ballet class with Ryan and Kelly. Uh-huh. And we're just like, we'll do some grandpa ma's and call it ballet class, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Give the people what they don't want. Uh-huh. And uh, <laughs> <High kicks. laughs> we go, like, the tech rehearsal went perfectly. And mm-hmm. we were so excited. Uh, meanwhile, it's like 5 a.m. And this was when I was living in Murray Hill. Uh-huh. And it was basically a dungeon and there were, like, no windows. Mm-hmm. And so it was 5 a.m., pitch black, and, like, just the lights in my apartment. It looked like I was fully in prison. <laughs> and and I like get up and hold onto my bar and Bella goes up and holds onto her, you know, kitchen counter as mm-hmm. well. And she goes to do a kick and it freezes. Her connection drops out. Then I am trying to talk to them. My audio drops out. <gasps> and so Kelly and Ryan were on like, live TV, like oh no. their first live episode since the pandemic oh, began. Oh my God. And uh, I'm just like being like miming do Grandma Maz. And then I start doing manic kicks in my prison dungeon. And it was just so tragic. Oh no. Were and you... it really spoke to where we were at at that at moment. The time. Just like trying desperately, desperately to make anything work. Right, right. And then of course, all of that got so figured out like with time. But those, yeah, yeah those first days of like all that tech stuff mm-hmm. was like an absolute nightmare. Ugh. So how did it end then? Like, where well, you're just like waving uh, Ryan, by. I'm like literally just doing like psycho kicks for the camera. And I hear Ryan, uh, what's his name? Seacrest. Yes. Um, I was like, Ryan <laughs> Reynolds? <laughs> <laughs> we wish. Uh, <laughs> that wasn't shade to Seacrest. We, I, it wasn't? I don't it know. It sounds like shade. I mean, I'm, 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 just because I prefer the other Ryan doesn't mean that Seacrest isn't also valid. <laughs> <laughs> Silence <laughs> speaks volumes. Mm. Um, okay, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> How did it end? You oh, heard uh, Ryan Seacrest. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. No shade. Um, <laughs> he goes, okay, well, thanks so much for the ballet class. <laughs> Next up, we've got you know, Janet Jackson or something. I don't, yeah. she, she would never do that. Yeah. She probably would. Yeah, she was that. like, I'm so tired. I hate you all. <laughs> I tried so hard to make you nice. Right? You know, remember Rhythm Nation? Oh, yeah, sure. She, I, oh. She's been telling us the tea since 1983. Yeah. We didn't listen. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway. <laughs> and ne- coming up next. <laughs> coming up next. Anybody, Bella. <laughs> yeah. so, um, so then you started the Cindy's Ballet class, and it was like an instant online hit. You guys were doing it very, very regularly. What were some of the organizations that you guys raised money for? Oh, my goodness. Can, can I remember any of them? Well, uh, definitely we, ABT's Recovery Fund. We did right? the ABT Emergency Fund. We mm-hmm. did the Dancers Emergency Fund. We did... American Cancer Society. We did, um, oh, crime and nearly human rights campaign, I think. Um, a lot. We did like so many, I can't even remember. We did a different one every week for uh-huh. like a year. How so are you selecting them? We would just like Google stuff and be yeah. like, this seems cool. We did the, what's Stacey Abrams, what fair fight. Oh, fair we fight. did a bunch and we brought it back for the election. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we were just trying to, entertain ourselves and not be garbage right Mm -hmm. yeah that's i mean it's so wonderful did did, like at the beginning of it were you was this always tied to donating to various organizations or were you just like did you realize at a certain point like oh wow wait like fifteen thousand people are watching us we should monetize this in a good way it started we we started it with the abt emergency fund right i think we actually started it with the dancer fund and um we didn't think people were going to take this class. And then there were like 15,000 people in a mm-hmm. class. And we were like, this is crazy that's, town. Yeah, that's amazing. We have, a, we're in a position to help. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so we just tried to. That's so great. And what kind of feedback were you getting from people um, about I mean, the classes? Like, it's, it's so funny. Now I see people like in New York or mm-hmm. here, even here in Vail. And yeah. it's like, People come up and say, thank you so much. You kept me going through a really dark moment Mm -hmm. of the pandemic. And it just feels really good. And it it really has nothing to do with our performance life, which is so interesting. Uh, But people feel really connected to us because 
it was it was just hard. It yeah. was a moment. Yeah. People want to get to know, you know, dancers better and see that other side of them. And you guys do such a great job of that. And it's just such a very like humble and honest way and are really true to yourselves. And I, I respect it. Well, thank you. Yeah. We're clowns. <laughs> so let, let's talk some about your book that mm-hmm. by the time we release the podcast, we'll be out everywhere. Yeah. And um, first of all, where do you get it? How about that first? Get that All out right, of the let's way. plug away. Okay, the book is called Center Center, and you can find it on any major retailer. You can go on Amazon, um, Walmart, Barnes and Noble, Kindle, Audible. There's an audiobook, which I read myself. <gasps> Fun. Um, Target. You can, Target. You can go to Target. Yeah. And you can get it at all of your local bookstores, which are always worth supporting. Yeah. Great. Great. So um, let's go back to, you know, we'll talk about the book itself, but let's go. Let's go. <laughs> You're an avid reader that mm-hmm. we know about you. Mm-hmm. Was this something you always loved, like from a from the time you were a kid or? Yeah. So my father read to me every night before I went to bed since I was, you know, probably four. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just couldn't get enough of books when I was a kid. I loved fantasy. I loved adventure. I had the kids' version of all the classics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I loved Jules Verne. I still love Jules Verne. Um, Alice in Wonderland has always spoken to me from like a nonsense point of view. Mm -hmm. I really relate to the absurdist qualities of it and uh, just the imagination. C.S. Lewis's um, Narnia series, Mm -hmm. all those like the hooks for kids, like they are so amazing to me. They, They bring kids into this world of imagination and it, it gives them license to to believe in a way. Right. Um, and so, yeah, my, my dad taught me to love books essentially, and it made me want to write a book. <laughs> yeah. So when did that happen? I have probably wanted to write a book or I've known I would try to at some point since I was like 20 probably. Uh-huh. And I've had the title since I was about 20. Uh-huh. Really? Yeah. I, I always knew what I wanted to call it. And I actually talked to my publisher and I was like, I've always wanted to call it center center, you know, which signifies the depth and width of a stage, Mm -hmm. uh, the the very center of it. And after a while, I I came up with this other title and because she loved center center right off the bat. Right. No, it's great. And uh, I was like, okay, well, it's a little like niche and I'm not sure people understand it. She was like, I don't care. It sounds good. Yeah. People remember it. Yeah. 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 But okay. Tell me what you think. This was my alternative title. So it might be like for the second version or whatever uh-huh. what do they call that second edition yeah um i wanted to call it hyperactive monster <laughs> <laughs> i mean it it's not necessarily telling me what the content of the book <laughs> yeah. will be in the way that center center is but also not no <laughs> <laughs> it, it center, might... center. hyperactive monster yeah well the, I, also i didn't want to have a subtitle mm-hmm. but they were insistent because i'm not a real celebrity mm-hmm. they were like you have to tell people what the book is about because you're not beyonce yeah uh, it can't just be like center, center, yeah. period. <laughs> so the subtitle of the book is Center, Center, a funny, sexy, sad, almost memoir of a boy in ballet. We love, love it. it. Almost memoir is great. So do, you knew at 20 that you wanted to write this book. You had the name. You kind of it was always like um, a goal of yours. What were you doing in terms of like actually cultivating the content? Were you journaling? Were you making notes? Or was it just still just like this kind of far off dream? I journal, Mm -hmm. but um, I didn't really dive too hard in my journals in the writing of the book. Mm -hmm. Um, I had a bunch of sort of life events that I wanted to build essays around. Mm -hmm. The book is a a collection of essays. Mm -hmm. It's called an almost memoir because collection of essays scares people. (laughs) Um, It's not very sexy. It's not sexy. It does not sound something like you want to... I'm going to not, I'm going to stop. So when I uh, pretty much sat down to write the book, I wrote out a series of uh, life events that I wanted to build essays mm-hmm. around and then recreated things from memory, did a lot of research, talked to my family, talked to my friends and uh, got all the Intel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But since you decided when you were 20 that you had this ambition but a lot hadn't happened to you yet in the way that it has now. Yeah. Like, That's true. Um, 
did you know that you were just going to wait for these life experiences to compound with the other things? I'm sure you write about your childhood. Oh yeah. But, uh, as uh, yeah, we haven't read the book. We're bad NPR hosts. Um, <laughs> well, we didn't well, get the yet. book. Uh, it's unavail at the moment, but, um, we didn't get the book in time, but I'm also <laughs> quite <laughs> sure that you write about like being a principal dancer at American ballet theater. Like at 20, like what shape did you have for the book in your mind? No, none. Yeah. It was saying, a pipe a dream. <laughs> it was literally like, I am a Leo and I will write a book. <laughs> yeah. Were you like, I have to create cool life experiences to fill a book someday? <laughs> yes. That's actually why you're a principal dancer at American Ballet Theater. Just, Just for, for the, the book. book. Just for the book. <laughs> Put it in the book. Yeah. Um, I'm curious because you have this idea in your head and then as dancers, you know, you probably wrote it down and then you gave them a draft and then here are editors coming back. And there's like this whole different process than something that we've ever done before. So what was that kind of like? It was fascinating. I bet. Um, yeah. Okay. Let me give you the whole, like uh, an yeah, elevator yeah, yeah. pitch of how it all came to be. Yeah. Yes. So I was in the middle of a Met season uh, in maybe 2018. Actually, no, it was 2019 Met season. Okay. And I got a DM on Instagram from a junior editor at Penguin. Mm -hmm. And she asked if we could meet and talk about the possibility of me writing a book. And I met her at the reflecting pool in between shows mm -hmm. at the Met. And we sat down on one of those stone benches. And she said, you're funny. You should think about writing. And I mm -hmm. said to myself, well. <laughs> <laughs> you hand her the manuscript. <laughs> I just like pulled out of my backpack. I was like, well, here it is. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, y why, yes, ma'am. I would like that very much. And I, you know, I. Uh, shed a tear be just because it was so nonsense like mm. it the things like that are just insane and mm. i look at my life and just the sheer amount of luck i've had and i feel just freaking great mm -hmm. um so i asked kevin my boss kevin mckenzie mm. if i could skip the nutcracker that year so it was the end of 2019 mm. i went up to my friends nate and peter's house in rhinebeck which is upstate new york in the dead of winter they had recently purchased it um i well, funnily enough, I thought there was no heat. So I was up in the woods, essentially, and I was freezing. And I had this tiny little dish heating me. <laughs> and come to find out later that the heat worked, and I just <gasps> didn't know how to turn it oh on. Oh, my God. <laughs> but it makes for a good story. Yeah. Um, so I, I spent the time writing. Uh, I spent a week writing to provide samples to the publisher okay. to see if they would want to essentially purchase a book that I would write. Right. So I did that. And I turned it in, made a big book proposal with my agent at CAA, and uh, they bought the book, and I wrote a book. <laughs> so then what is the like editing process like then from there? So from there, I generated a manuscript with my brain, mm -hmm. and then uh, essentially turned it in, and essay by essay, we would do back and forth edits, and uh, my main editor would say, you know, expound on on this this is mm -hmm. this is what we want to know more about mm -hmm. right. or cut that that is for the wikipedia mm -hmm. you know like we right. don't need her uh -huh. um <laughs> and it was really fascinating to to hear what she thought was interesting versus what i thought was interesting because mm -hmm. right. she has such a different perspective right. you know um i'm so steeped in the ballet world and i knew i never wanted to write a ballet memoir that right. just super doesn't work for me mm -hmm. um so it was great to have her input i adored working yeah. with her did she have any dance background yeah she used to dance okay. when she was younger oh, right. and she's a big dance fan and oh, and good. sort of had been following me for you know since 1907 yeah <laughs> so was there an idea then um about who the audience for the book would be from the beginning I and mean, was that partially guiding some of where the book was going I knew I didn't want it to be a ballet audience. And I sound like I resent the ballet audience. I don't. I adore people who love ballet mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it is so spe so special to me. Um, but I wanted to write a book that explored human themes outside mm -hmm. of my little niche world. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I essentially wanted to write it for as many people as possible. Mm -hmm. I didn't right. want to limit it. Mm -hmm. Well, it makes sense in terms of like what your social media presence is like. It's never limited to ballet to begin with. And... Partially, I'm sure what attracted them initially to you was that presence. So it makes sense that your editors would want that involved in the book. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the most concise answer we've ever gotten from James. But yes. <laughs> 
Did you ever get any pushback from your publishers in terms of like content? What, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, just like right now, literally before we started this podcast, Rebecca, I was just like, James, please don't be my editing nightmare. <laughs> you know, like you like to push boundaries. You like to be a little zany or outrageous. So were there moments where you wanted something and they were just like not acceptable? So <laughs> actually the publisher was, very very excited by the absurdist quality of mm-hmm. of what i was doing mm-hmm. um you know i think when they hired me to write a book they thought it would appeal to young dancers yeah um but can i just read you what the inside flap I says yes. that, please so it goes through the whole um the whole like description of what the the book is about and then in bright pink all caps at the bo- at the bottom of the description it says this is not a book for children <laughs> so there you have it yeah. they let it all it's all in there uh-huh. you know it is it is not a book for children but it is a book that kids will love if they can get their grubby little mitts on it <laughs> uh. Is there something um, in this back and forth process that the editors kind of drew out of you that came into the book that you wouldn't have wanted to put in originally and now you're really happy you made it in? Well, originally they were like, there's nothing about ballet in this book. Oh, funny. And I was like, oops, (laughs) it's because I didn't want to write about ballet. (laughs) Um, And so I had to, it's not like I had to write things about ballet. I already had a number of chapters that I had written specifically about, you know, how I got into dance, how I joined American Ballet Theater, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, experiences I've had while in ballet companies. Mm -hmm. Um, But I did have to find ways to weave the the through line of ballet into it, Mm -hmm. you know, because people know me because I'm a ballet dancer. And that's something that uh, makes me uncomfortable because I, you know, I, it's really hard to think you're good at ballet. <laughs> that's all. Yeah. But that's but, important for people to hear you yeah. say that. Uh, I mean, right? Yeah. So I'm wondering then, because you want to have, have preserved the sort of like balance between like talking about ballet, but obviously like addressing other subjects that interest you, then like how linear is the book? Is, is it told chronologically or like how it's like more like thematically you have to go? So I essentially like the the build of the book for me was thematic Mm -hmm. it is completely Mm non-chronological i wanted to tackle different like human elements in each essay right um and and things that i've learned essentially a lot of this is not a book in which i am a hero right i'm often very unlikable i have to be Mm -hmm. completely honest and i apologize in advance for all of my indiscretions generally um so it's just like a a theme heavy exploration of Mm -hmm. being alive right right yeah. Yeah. I can't. Oh, well, we can't wait to read it. We're oh, gonna, Christ. We're going to finally. Oh, well, maybe we should do a follow up after that. Ooh. And we'll be like, James. James. Girl. Not <laughs> um, well, I have, I always, I'm curious who your um, inspiration as a writer mm-hmm. is. Like, obviously, as dancers, we're constantly drawing from other sources of art. Mm-hmm. You know, we mimic other dancers, but other, your, your, your interests really are kind of all over the map. So, is there a writer whose styling you like, or are you inspired by other sources of art? Like, what is what's your inspiration? I adore sort of archaic sounding English literature. Hmm. I I love the sort of uh, P. G. Wodehouses. I love the sort of like Lewis Carrolls of mm-hmm. the world who have a very absurd tone mm-hmm. and it's mm-hmm. flowery and silly. Mm-hmm. Um, I love that. I love old science fiction. H. G. Wells, mm-hmm. uh, Jules Verne. Uh, it's so decidedly proper in its, you know, fantasy. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, that's very inspiring to me. I, my father's an English teacher. Mm-hmm. I adore sort of diving into the sort of nerdier side of, yeah. of literature. Yeah. Um, I am not educated. So just don't forget that. <laughs> okay. I am completely, I barely graduated high school. Um, I enjoy reading. I am as self-taught as they come Uh when it comes to writing. So Mm -hmm. this is not a piece of literature. This is not a masterpiece. This is a thing I made. Right. So, but you mentioned all these fiction writers. Like, would you ever want to write fiction? Does that interest you at all? Absolutely. Yes. I will be trying my hand at fiction. Mm -hmm. I'd like to do a teen series. Um, 
you know, I, I don't want to talk about it too much. Oh, yeah. No, I mm. want to know. No. Would it yeah. be like fantasy? Would be sounds like yeah, fantasy. it would be fantasy. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. I have a whole, I, I have it all we in my brain that I can't now. tell you right now. Okay, I well, think that there is like a, 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 you know, again, you can't say anything, but I can imagine a world where you're writing a fantasy series that has enough like James in it right. to distinguish it from yeah. other things that would be really fun. <laughs> We'll find out. Yeah, we will. What are you hoping that audiences will take away from reading this book? I think I just want people to feel seen a little bit. Um, I we've had to deal with so much on our own. I'm a gay man. Uh, I I sort of figured that out in the late '90s, <laughs> and uh, it was difficult. Mm-hmm. And this isn't a book just for queer people. This is a book for anybody who has felt a little left of center. Um, and I just want people to commiserate, to learn a little, to feel a little bit better about themselves through my mistakes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. That's beautiful. I love it. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's beautiful. It is beautiful. It is. I can't yeah. wait. To, yeah. Um, let's take a second away from the book and talk about another passion of yours. You, you've started choreographing mm-hmm. and um, you had a, a ballet that Rebecca and I both loved, uh, Premiere in Vail so 2019, because mm-hmm. that was the last time we were here. Yeah, yeah. But you're making a new ballet. Oh, actually, and we a little birdie told us, a little birdie was very excited about this new ballet. Mm-hmm. And it was, it was very sweet because, you know, it's like, there's, she has no ulterior motive. She was just like, oh, James' ballet is so good and <laughs> so different from the first ballet. You guys are going to love it. So <laughs> tell us a little bit about what audiences in Vail will see for your new work. Okay, so the last ballet I premiered in Vail was a, like, a really sweeping romantic mm-hmm. number, and I wanted it to be very uh, Les Sylphides adjacent, mm-hmm. or like Pas de Cot adjacent, mm-hmm. but you know, impossible because I'm me. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I wanted to do a complete 360 for this new piece, and it's classical in nature, but also incredibly uh, modern is the wrong word, but like millennial Mm -hmm. i think Mm -hmm. um you'll see a lot of references to uh, like acrobatics and and music video dancing Mm -hmm. and just things that i've grown up with that i love so Mm -hmm. much um it's sexy Mm -hmm. uh there the costumes are, are it's basically lingerie um and it's it's sort of like a not terribly gendered costume Mm -hmm. um in the music it's least Oh, that's a really hard word. List. I sound like Alexi. List. L-I-S-Z-T. Good. That. That That guy. It's that guy. (laughs) It's Franz. Um, (laughs) My buddy Franz. It's the Hungarian Rhapsody, Mm -hmm. which is a a banger. Yeah. The banger on the piano. Classic banger. (laughs) Classical banger. Um, Yeah. So, uh, well, I guess... Well, I want to hear more about that acrobatics. We heard a little bit about it last night that maybe... Mm -hmm. You and Bella had a little bit of a challenge working through some oh, of these yeah. things. Well, because so, you, you like to be imaginative. Like for your partnering yeah. in particular. Yep. In the last ballet, you really like to push the envelope or do things that are like a little things that I feel like when we saw it, we were like, Oh, we haven't seen this in a ballet. Totally. Yeah, there were so many moments like that. And that was like you're saying it was like a little bit more on the classical side is what you were looking mm-hmm. for. And like with this, when you're just going all out, I'm so excited to see what kind of things are happening. So how are you like envisioning these moments and how are you working through them with the dancers in the studio? It's difficult to get classical ballet dancers to trust that they will survive a scary partnering thing. Mm-hmm. Totally. Yeah. Um, it is not in the repertoire. The hardest partnering things we do are press lifts. Yeah. Torch lifts. Right which are incredibly safe in my opinion. Yeah, right. And I grew up, uh, my, my teachers, my first dance teachers had an adagio act, which is essentially a Cirque du Soleil level right. pas de deux. Right. So tosses, flips, throws, incredibly mind-blowing, dangerous, beautiful partner mm-hmm. work. So I try to always incorporate things that I learned from them mm-hmm. when I was mm-hmm. a teenager. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I want the, you know these principal dancers to yeah. to be able to do this, and it's right. difficult to 
give people the tools to believe in themselves when doing difficult s- steps. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Um, so I try to do that. doesn't always work. Mm-hmm. It's really difficult for everybody involved right. because it's scary. Acrobatics are scary. I watch the gymnastics, you know, Olympics, mm-hmm. whatever's. Yeah. And I'm like, well, how'd you learn that? Yeah. Right. You know, it's the same. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm just trying to give people confidence in a, in a safe space. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of, I like that. It's kind of like a signature. It's like not really anyone else is exploring that side of things right. yeah. as a choreographer. So it's fun that you, it's my heritage. It's yeah. a, a young, a youth, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's so great. Very good. Well, I think everyone's going to go buy your book. Now we're going to make everyone? you very rich through this episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yay! And, and we're going to be, we're going to dethrone Bella as the most listened to uh, episode of Conversations on Dance. Yes, yeah. everybody right now, send this to at least three people because <laughs> I will destroy Bella. <laughs> <laughs> um, and everyone, we're going to put in the um, description of this episode where people can get your book. We hope that they will get it. We know they'll love it. And thanks, James. Thanks, thanks you James. both so much. I adore you and I hope to be on the pod one million more times. No, you shall. Well, anytime you're, you never, you're never leaving yeah. us. <laughs> <laughs>